The book is called uh, C. K. Prahlad, The Mind of the Futurist, uh, Rare Insights on Life, Leadership and Strategy. So, uh, by the uh, title, you would uh, assume that it encompasses a lot of uh, stuff. It does. The objective of the book is to firstly uh, demystify the uh, uh, management legend. C. K. Prahlad was a India's, uh, I mean, globally he was rated as number two management legend after Peter Drucker, uh, and uh, he was termed a management legend during his lifetime, and he got whatever prize that needs to be got. Uh, but the objective of the book uh, are many. Where I got excited to write the book is that. How can a professor, an academician, influence business outcome? He influenced business leaders uh, to perform, and he changed their mindset radically, especially uh, the soon after the reforms, the 1991 reforms. Uh, Indian business leaders were all at sea. Uh, they were confused a lot, and they were frightened a lot and uh, they needed someone to guide them, someone to coach them and take their, uh, uh, make them believe in themselves. That is the biggest achievement according to me, which he could instill in a lot of business leaders. And this book is an anecdote, uh, rather a collection of anecdotes of how he uh, directly influenced influenced many of the business leaders who all are uh, really global players today, including the Tatas, the Mahindras, the Godrej, uh, to a large extent Infosys indirectly, uh, TCS, the IT companies, Wipro initially he was on their board. So if you look at which are the Indian blue chip groups today, you list them, he was there for them for two decades, especially in the first uh, 10 years when India was wondering what it was doing. Uh, the reforms were very difficult, there, was no, there were no systems, but more than anything, the takeaway from the book is that you do not get bogged down by constraints around you. Uh, you go after your aspirations and aspirations should be many times bigger than your constraints. If you have that, then you can achieve. Yeah? So that was a big message which he instilled in forum after forum and uh, he addressed, he would have addressed thousands of business leaders in his uh, 20 year uh, uh, journey. And for him, it was uh, almost like, not almost, it was a mission. It was a mission to transform India from a very, I mean, in 91, we were called third world country. By in 12 to 15 years, we were called emerging market. And today, whether we deserve it or not, another five years will tell that we are uh, one of the superpowers economic superpowers. So, uh, to quote uh, K. V. Kamath, the chairman of uh, ICICI, uh, he said whenever the word emerging, which prefixes, prefix to India, India is called emerging country, emerging India, whenever the word emerging is removed, when that happens, the biggest credit should go to C. K. Prala. So, this book captures a lot of the business leaders, how, it is not just saying uh, statements, business leader statements, it is how they very passionately work together. C. K. Prahlad and the business leaders very passionately work together and the results are all there to see. There are several, um, one is they, for them leadership Leadership is uh, very, this is a very uh, nice term C. K. Prahlad used, 
is folding the future in. So he made them uh, think, plan well ahead and plan back. Because most Indian companies, even now maybe, are very short termist. So got them to think ahead. And when you think ahead, uh, you are able to solve a lot of the seemingly unsolvable constraints that are around. So all these companies did that. And the book also uh, looks at the growth pattern. Uh, in early 1901 to 95, 96, all these companies, maybe ex other than Tata's, were all 200, 300, 400 million companies. But the aggressiveness which he put in them, in 10 years, 12 years, they were a billion, com billion dollar companies. Today they are uh, 40, 50 billion dollar company, Tata's 100, million, 100 billion dollar company. See, end of the day, I'm not saying he should get all the credit. It's the entrepreneurs who should get all the credit. But then, the country, as a country, we have to appreciate, recognize uh, people who have coached them, who have motivated them. Not just that, he uh, was very brutal. That's the word all the business leaders used. He was brutal with them. And he said, you are capable. It is there, you can achieve it. Why, why are you not doing it? Dream, just dream, dream big. So, and he believed in system, the way to do it. It's, it wasn't one session and then he went away and things didn't happen. Year after year, 1994 was the first CEO forum which started in Bangalore in ITC. Year after year, at least 50 top business leaders went for us. It was almost called, it was called a retreat, CEO retreat, three day retreat till the year he died, that is 2010, every year. And they all came back. Initially, it was all business leaders. Then the business leaders brought along the CEOs and CIOs, the CXO community. Uh, that's where you have the uh, Chanda coaches and uh, the CEOs also were inspired. So this book nearly uh, articulates the uh, journey of nearly 30 to 35 business leaders, CEOs, and put all their uh, revenues today, it's quite a big number. See, everything, I mean, I wish I could pull out some quotes from the book. Uh, everything he said he did, not just for business, even for private life. Because uh, he, he believed in aligning personal life, business life, uh, everything that is part of life uh, into a future-oriented uh, thing. So he said, what do you want to be? What, uh, uh, what's, what, op what uh, opinion you have, what view, what thoughts you have about where you want to be is more important than discussing current affairs. Because all of us are used to discussing current affairs. But we don't talk about how we are going to reach the journey five years from now. So putting that kind of mental framework into people's mind is what uh, got them thinking and to do it. Uh, the book is all about that. One of his biggest contributions, uh, pardon me if I exaggerate, uh, to the world, not just to India, largely to India, is how the world or the India looks at the poor. For too long, we have looked at the poor as incapable, dregs of society, just to be ignored, let them fend for themselves, and give them doles, typically what governments do, give subsidies. He, the first guy who said that you treat them first as individuals, give them dignity. And he made all of us think that they are all, they are entrepreneurs. In them, there's entrepreneurship in every person, in uh, poor. And if you do that, if you give opportunities, open up opportunities to the poor, 
that is the best thing to do for them rather than giving them doles. Con think of them as entrepreneurs, think of them as consumers. So this opened up a huge, huge market. And his intentions were two. Firstly, he wanted the uh, multinationals to, when, he, when they were looking at developing countries, poor countries, uh, they didn't know what to do. They thought the market size was just about 100 million, 150 million middle class. But he showed them, no, the market is 1 billion. It's just how you look at it. That's when you had this sachet, 1 rupee sachets. Uh, and he made them think that poor also aspire to have equal quality as better than quality than uh, the rich guy. Give them, but give them in a different way. So, micro payments, and they will do it. And this, uh, uh, it's, I would call it a revolution. A revolution in the thinking and delivery to, uh, uh, I mean, the poor get the best of what is uh, there to be had. And another assumption he uh, totally uh, uh, discounted was that if it is cheap, it has to be low quality. That's, that was our assumption, isn't it? That's what our mindset. He said, no, cheap doesn't have to be low quality. It can be even higher quality. So, and businessmen started thinking about this. And in fact, if we go back to 2004, when uh, Reliance launched the uh, uh, first mobile phone, cheap mobile phone for, if you remember, 500 rupees, 550 rupees. Uh, it, it, as a technology, it was great. And everybody could afford 500 rupees. Yeah? And although the uh, Ambani, the Ambani's didn't directly acknowledge uh, this, but I'm told that 500 of the executives, top executives in Reliance, were all distributed, were all given a copy of the article which C.K. Prahlad wrote in uh, Harvard Business Review on bottom of the pyramid. And the first mobile phone uh, came out of this. And there are several ex examples. So rethinking, redefining the idea of the poor. So I mean, I would say that uh, that would be his biggest contribution to the planet. And this book captures that.